What's up guys, this is Packer HQ, uh, headquarters for Packers fans. So I started on Instagram, I have an Instagram account, it's just Packer HQ. Um, I decided to start a YouTube channel, kind of talk about everything that I want to talk about. Anything to do with the Packers. Uh, this video is going to be over the top five needs, in my opinion, for the Packers for the 2019 season. And this is all based off of the 2018 season maybe before that. So let's get started. First, you know, you can't waste any more time for Aaron Rodgers. I mean, we've wasted so much time of his career, like the past, what, three or four years at least, I feel like have just been wasted with Mike McCarthy. But now that he's gone, things can really get turned around. Aaron's gonna be 36 in December during the 2019 season. Uh, he has the talent, definitely, to play into his 40s, no doubt. But will he be able to make it to his 40s? That depends on his offensive line. I put offensive line at number one. Again, this is all opinion-based. You could put your top five needs wherever you want. Um, but I will always think, when you have a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers... The offensive line is always going to be your priority. You have to protect them. Um, it's just, without a doubt, the top priority for me. Um, they didn't perform bad, honestly, last season. The pass protection is one of the best in the NFL. Uh, you got David Bakhtiari, Lane Taylor, Corey Lindsley. Um, you got Lucas Patrick, Bell, and Justin McCray at right guard. Right guard is a huge hole for this offensive line. Um, and then you got Ryan Bulaga. And he's actually, he improved a lot in 2018. Um, I think he posted his higher, his highest pass protection rating of his career last year. Um, yeah, in 2018, they were actually a top 10 offensive line, which I would really like them to be at least a top five, but top 10, I'll take it. That's pretty good. And you could tell, honestly, they're pretty average in age they're not old um 27 is young you got like at least a good five six years left at least at least um brian Bulaga, he's 29 lane taylor 29 they're all pretty young honestly they still have several years of the career left not a worry for me but you can always improve the offensive line any way you can that could be either from the draft or free agency there's never a good enough offensive line Second is the pass rush. Huge, huge part of our problem. Um, we all know Muhammad Wilkerson, he got hurt. So he got placed in IR, I think after like the second or third game, I don't even know. Mike Daniels, he's really declined. I mean, he's still really good, don't get me wrong, but he, he just didn't perform here as well. You got Dean Lowry, Montrevious Adams, Kenny Clark, and Tyler Lancaster. Tyler Lancaster actually, I think he filled in for, was it Wilkerson? And he played really well. I think he's playing no tackle. He, he actually, if you look at his stats, he did really well. At the linebacker position, you have Nick Perry, Blake Martinez, Clay Matthews, who's right now a free agent, Antonio Morrison, Orrin Burks, Kyler Fackrell, Reggie Gilbert, Kendall Donerson, sorry. Um, now, when you read this, it makes it sound like the Packers had a great pass rush. They came in third place in total sacks, with 53 sacks on the year. Uh, but Matthews posted a career low of two and a half sacks, and Nick Perry only had one and a half sacks before he was placed on the IR. Uh, I will give it to Matthews. He did play a lot more pass coverage this year. Like, he dropped back a lot, and I don't feel like he rushed as much. Um, but he's... I think 32 years old right now and he's a free agent he provides a great veteran presence on the team that's for sure um, and then Kyler actually led the team last year with eight sacks and he was a huge improvement from 2017 the pass rush is not as good as the sack rating or ranking will show they really really struggle the brushing the passer and they have to improve that if they ever want to make a difference or ever want to make the playoffs again because we cannot keep wasting Aaron Rodgers career 
Next is the wide receivers. So right now we have Devontae Adams, Randall Cobb, who's also a free agent. You got Marquez, Scantling, you got St. Brown, Geronimo Allison, and Jake Kumaro. I think that was all on the depth chart. Um, please forget, forgive me if I forget, forget any players on the depth chart on these, uh, on these slides here. But Green Bay actually came in 16th place overall receiving with 4,074 yards. They did place in the top 10. They placed 9th place in passing with 4,238 yards. But Aaron Rodgers, I think he posted a career low 61.3% completion rate, which is actually really horrible. He, he still passed for, I think, like almost 30 touchdowns compared to two picks, which is outstanding ratio, but for his career, that's not not where he's been producing at all. Um, receivers have a lot to do with that. Randall Cobb was a stud. Yeah, I think like since he's been drafted, he was a stud. But 2014-15, when you had Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb playing slot, you just couldn't stop him. Devontae Adams started slow, dropped a lot of passes, but he's turned into a top five receiver in the NFL without a doubt. Randall Cobb, he could still be great, but honestly, he just does not see as many targets. And he'll, he'll catch the ball, like he's he's got good hands. And he'll make plays when he's got the ball in his hands. But he's definitely struggled with injuries, and the production has just fell over the past three, four years. And the, honestly, you've got these great young receivers who are got a good body size, tall. Geronimo Allison has been amazing. In the games that he's played and I feel like he's gonna be a good wide receiver two or three and there was a lot of hype on Jake Kumaro I haven't really seen him play uh, he was injured for like the whole year until like the last couple games but he didn't really do much uh, we'll just have to see when it comes to that so we could definitely improve on the wide receivers because uh, I do believe Randall Cobb is gonna leave and Clay Matthews is probably gonna leave if they're not re-signed or take a pay cut um, yeah, so let's go on to the next one. Cornerback. Yes, we did great with drafting amazing cornerbacks. Good, young cornerbacks. We got Kevin King uh, a couple of years ago. We got Jari Alexander, Josh Jackson, who was a stud at um, Iowa. The thing is, Kevin King... He's, he's improved, like he's improved every year he's played, but he's always hurt. I kind of see him as a Sam Shields version too, if he doesn't get healthy and stay that way. Davon House, I don't even know why, honestly. We only have him on the team for depth. He doesn't do great at all. He's on the team because he provides veteran presence and can really guide these younger players. Um, Kevin King, when he plays, he's good. He's been, he's really improved and he's good, but he's always hurt and I hope he could stay healthy because I, I believe he can be great when he's healthy. He just needs to stay on the field. Alexander, he's really, really, really impressed with it, uh, as much as he's played. With one season under his belt, if he can keep this up and keep improving every year, he's gonna be a star. But one thing you guys should know about me is I, Definitely want at least two to three consecutive above average seasons for a player before I can trust them. Especially when it comes to the Packers, honestly. It's, they're my favorite team, without a doubt, but you just can't trust them on a year to year basis. You just don't know. Josh Jackson, I feel like he should really get more playing time. He's gonna be great, you know. I, I really, really study Iowa players and they're always good. Most of them that come to the NFL are just great players, and we should have gotten, uh, what was that one guy? King, the other, Desmond King, who's on the Chargers. I really wish we would have drafted him a couple of years ago, and now he's a stud on the Chargers. Uh, we did get Rashad Breland, which I was so excited for, because I know he's a, he's a player. He can ball, and he's from the Redskins, and I've, I've watched him since he came in the league on the Redskins, and I was like, that guy knows how to play. He... He's above average, I would say, but he's not like a great, but he's he definitely knows what he's doing and I can count on him to be a day-to-day -day starter. Tony Brown, I don't really know. 
um, just depth right now. And then Traymon Williams, I think he moved to play safety. He just provides veteran presence on the team as well. He's definitely lost a couple steps on his speed, and he gets blown every time by receivers. So I'm glad he moved to safety because we don't have any safeties right now. Um, let's see, the Packers secondary came in 30th out of 32. So out of 32 teams in the NFL, they came in 30th place in overall passes defended with only 46. They came in dead last in interceptions with only four picks in 2018. Tampa Bay led the NFL with 95 passes defended and 26 total interceptions. 26 interceptions in 2018. The Packers only had four. Now, yes, the secondary improved, but they have a long way to go, and I believe any help will make this team better. The, you can never be good enough at cornerback and offensive line, anywhere, really any position, you can always improve. And then you got safeties. We definitely need help with safeties. I do not trust Josh Jones. I don't really know Raven Green. Uh, Kenshaw Bryce, mediocre. I mean, he can really make some plays, but then sometimes he just lets you down. Traymond Williams, he's 35 years old, I think. <laughs> you know, I just... I don't trust Traymond either. Eddie Pleasant, I think we just signed him from, like, the Texans, but I don't trust him either. I, I think I think Eddie's actually good, but I haven't seen him play enough. But I heard that he's good. He just hasn't give, been given the, uh, the opportunities that much. Josh Jones, he's... He's made a couple nice plays, but he gets, he blows coverage a lot, and I've seen him get burnt several times, and he de definitely does not deserve to be a starter, so we have to get some help at safety, especially since we let Burnett walk in free agency, and then we traded Clinton Dix. I know he was going to walk in free agency anyways, and we couldn't afford to re-sign him, but you know what? He's a free agent now. Maybe we can somehow try to work it back, but we lost our two best safeties. Um... That's it, guys. That's, those are the top needs. Um, let me know what you guys think. This is my first video, so like I said, it's all opinions, and just let me know what you guys think. It's, technically, you could put these five needs in any order, any order you want, or if you think there should be a better order that they should go in, list them in the comments. Uh, I'm a Packers fan. I'm not looking to like argue with anybody. I think anybody's opinion is valued, so... Just let me know what you guys think, and uh, let me know if you guys would look forward to future videos, and I have a lot I could discuss. Thanks, guys.